Today on Townline Garage, we're in the doghouse. It's not for what you think. We're installing the Hound Heater 250. Yep, our doghouse is heated. HVAC for puppies, this time, the Townline Garage. Stay tuned. What we got here is a homemade doghouse heater I made a few years back. It's been working really good. I made this for 40 bucks or so a number of years ago. So what we got here is a box I made out of sheet metal. I'll take the cover off so you can see inside. We've got a line thermostat like you'd use for a baseboard heater. Uh, what I got over it is just some scrap flashing uh, to keep the dogs from cranking on the knob not that they would on purpose but uh, you know they would investigate I've just got a basic furnace vent this would probably be for a cold air return I just after I had the box built I went to Maynard's with the tape measure and figured out which one I wanted So you can see inside, you got your basic chicken lamp, brooding lamp, brooding, heat lamp, ceramic base. It's mounted inside this box. Um, there's two layers of sheet metal here. Um, the outside is about the same thickness is, well, it is made out of ductwork. I had laying around extra galvanized steel uh, from a furnace project or something or other. So that's what the outside is made of, a layer of that. And then inside, I bolted a um, junction box to the bottom. And then to that junction box, I have mounted the ceramic casing. It's rigid in there for the heat lamp. You can't use your standard plastic because this does get hot. It's, it's meant to. You buy your heat lamp for $10-ish, and it comes with a deflector. I use that to kind of point the heat down and hopes that it would stir the air up a little bit because there's no fan on this so the light bulb points up the shield points down just to try and push as much heat out of the box as what i can this actually fits in a doghouse that's a two-door unit and this goes in one of the two doors just for the winter time so summertime the wind can blow through both doors of the doghouse um, then i block winter off with this guy and a board on the outside. You can see the outside has all this tape over it. There's about a half inch or so of foiled face insulation, again, to try and push the heat out. The doghouse is insulated, but it's just one extra measure to make sure that the outside of this box doesn't get too hot against the, the door entryway, and then just to make sure that heat is radiating out into the living space. So we got our ceramic bulb holder in the bottom. That's wired to a line voltage thermostat at the time. I think you could pick these up for 20 bucks. I've got a metal junction box here with some rigid conduit and a conduit connector into the enclosure. Um, so the wiring runs through there. It's completely enclosed. The only area where wire is sticking out is the cord, which I have power going out near the doghouse. The doghouse sits where there was going to be a shed, so there's a post like what you'd see in a campground where there's a junction box and I've got power out there. So it's a grounded three-way plug. This is just an old extension cord that's run through. So it's, it's grounded, it's kept away from the animals. What I'll do each year is kind of take this out and get the dust off. The dust gets in there um, because even with the heater, we put in some straw on the bottom of the house just as an insurance, as an insurance policy. And then when it's warmer out and the heater's not needed, the dogs actually prefer that a little bit because they don't want to get too warm. They're wearing a sweater all year long. So I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of compressed air and simple green. Get this dust out of here. I'm going to plug it in, make sure it's working for the air, make sure the bulb looks good. And then, uh, then we'll go ahead and put it in the doghouse. 
One thing I did do, this is your standard 250 watt red bulb. I dusted this with some barbecue black paint just to keep it from being too annoying for the dogs. I just thought that, that was the right thing to do so it wasn't just kind of blaring in their face each time this would turn off and on because it is going to click on, click off, click on, click off based on what the thermostat tells it. So I got it blown off with some compressed air in. Just going to do a test for the air to make sure the thermostat's working right. A um, couple notes if you decide to do this yourself. This took a couple renditions to make sure that I was comfortable with it being in the doghouse unattended for long periods of time. I ran it in my garage a lot and took note of where things were getting hot. This is a 250 watt bulb. I also tried a 100 to 150 watt bulb. Um, I tried a ceramic one for reptiles thinking that uh, you know 150 watts would be fine for the size house it was but the surface of the ceramic bulb actually got warmer than this 250 water and the 250 water is actually cheaper so this actually does a better job in we're up in Michigan so the coldest we see is um, you know a wee bit below zero and at that point they're really coming inside to the house anyway our dogs bounce back and forth but I'll show you how we keep track of inside the house and monitor that this is working but um, taking note of how hot the front of the unit gets this is a standard cold air return but I've got a layer of aluminum screen on the outside to keep straw from getting inside it that was one of my biggest concerns when I was testing the ceramic bulb I could actually put a piece of paper on top of the ceramic bowl and it would start to smoke and light on fire. This 250 watt glass bulb did not do that when I tried it, not saying it wouldn't. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I had some extra protection against the critters getting stuff up against that bulb. So I wrapped the screen around, glued it with silicone and also made a little bit of a silicone gasket around this just because the house does have straw in it for insurance. And I wanted to make sure that things were not going to get shoved up in there. So we'll plug it in. Um, and we'll test it out. Also, my little cover I put over the line voltage thermostat. I had to pop some extra holes in it because it wasn't getting enough ventilation. It was, this box was getting hot and then it was staying cold. And it, was, it just wasn't the same as the rest of the house. So I popped some extra holes in there that lined up with the holes actually in this box so it still protects it from getting the critters getting at it but it still is functional uh, for your sensing temperature so it's set for about 65 right now it's probably 55 in the garage right now i'm just going to turn it down to make sure it Turns off when it's supposed to, so the switch is still working. Yep, my guess is about right. 55 is when it clicks back on. I'm going to put it back to 65 and just let it let it go for a little bit just to make sure um, nothing's getting too hot. thermostat cover got held on there with some old ground wire mm, smells like an old hot barn so it seems to be working all right we're gonna pop this bulb back out of here and dust it with some high heat paint What I'm going to do, I'm 
screw this back in, and turn it right back on and let it cook itself together. A uh, little more. It's going to smoke for a little bit, that's how you know it's working. So here's the interior of the doghouse. We've got the winter setup. We've got door one. And door two, which is currently plugged up with the heater, summertime, get a nice breeze through here, keeps it nice and cool. Wintertime, we had the breezeway door. We've got the entryway here, or if you'd rather, the, uh, the vestibule. We've got inner door, and then the outer storm door. Up top, we've got sensor for remote thermostat, so we can tell how warm it is in here, or how cold it is in here. Here's a storm door from the outside, just like the heater. This stuff is a few years old, but it's been working really well. It's due for some new finish, but this stuff is, has been working for us. What we got here is the cheapest floor mat you can find. It just happened to be the same size as the doghouse door opening. This is the storm door, and that's the summer door. So we stack those up, help keep the breeze out. What I did on the bottom of the floor mat here is I've got your magnetic cabinet locks pop riveted with aluminum washers and then just put the little metal tab down there at the bottom so pooches come and go it kind of locks right back in nice heavy door keeps the breeze out we got the doghouse heater in for the winter time just want to share a little bit more about what went into putting this together it would have been great to get a video of the assembly of the the box itself uh, but that was a number of years ago and uh, at that point I wouldn't be able to uh, give testament to how well it's been working. The outside of the box, like I said, is scrap furnace duct material. I think I had some pieces, I already had some bends in it. Uh, as far as making uh, the bends that I needed to from there, I just a uh, dead blow hammer on the side of the workbench. The inside, I mentioned flashing on the thermostat, but most of the inside stuff is thinner aluminum just easier to work with and I could move it around and get the heat to go where I wanted it to go. Um, as you can tell, I like this foil face tape. I would not use duct tape for this project. Uh, it's just going to get too warm. But foil face tape is going to hold up a lot better to the heat and I could actually use it to hold some of the deflectors in place on the inside. Um, sheet metal screws, uh, pop rivets are holding this thing together where the sheet metal is concerned. And when I showed you the inside of the doghouse, um, I showed the sensor that's on the inside ceiling. Um, inside our house, we've got one of these fancy indoor-outdoor thermometers. And that's how we tell how well this house has been working. Uh, how the heat's been working in the house, rather. So, get up in the morning sometimes and the doghouse will be warmer than our house sometimes. So, it works well at regulating temperature. And then the size house, size bulb, size of this heater was made for four dogs. Uh, so the house itself is about eight foot long and 24 to 32 inches high, about three foot deep. So you're going to probably want to size, if you do something like this, size your bulb down. You might be looking for a Hound Heater 100 if you got a you know single beagle unit out back. Uh, we had two beagles puggle and a little white furry thing all in there and it worked really well for us. A little quick sketch here of the little entryways that are there. This heater is not exposed to the elements at all. There's a 2x8, 2x10-ish, call it an entryway, that, that we we're working in the, the left door is where the heater goes in and then there's a piece of plywood with weather stripping that goes on the outside. So none of this is made to be out in the weather. All of it is inside the house. It's grounded and sealed off from everything. 
extra careful to make sure that the dogs can't get into trouble with it, that the straw can't get pushed into it. And as I mentioned, this has been in service for about five to eight years, and we've always had very good luck with it. So whether you're trying to keep your pooch warm, chicken, goat, I, I, I maybe, I, I don't know. Either way, hope we got your head scratching so you can get out in the garage and make something out of the spare parts you got laying around. Maybe take a trip to Menards, Home Depot, Farm and Fleet. Either way, head out in the garage, enjoy yourself. Till next time, adios. Smells like pee in here.